Welcome to Once Upon a Time, the San Bruno Library's Cable Storytime. I'm Miss Susan, and I'm so glad to be reading you books today. I have all kinds of books about pets. Silly pets, fun pets, maybe the wrong kind of pets, picking out a good pet for yourself. All kinds of books about pets, and I really hope that you like them. And I always like to start my story time with our welcome song. So why don't we sing that today? We'll start clapping our hands together, okay? Here we go. We're glad you're here today. We're glad you're here today. Hi ho the Mario. We're glad you're here today. We're glad you're here today. We're glad you're here today. Hi ho the Mario. We're glad you're here today. I am glad that you're here today, but I also hope that you come see me at the library for a story time too on a different day. All right, our first book today is called Silly Doggy by Adam Stower. Oh my goodness, that looks like an awfully big dog behind her, doesn't it? And look at those claws. Mm, I'm not sure that this is really a doggy. Let's find out. One morning, Lily saw something wonderful in her garden. Hmm, it was big, brown, and hairy. It had four legs, a tail, and a big wet nose. And Lily had always wanted one. Hmm. <gasps> doggy! She cried. Oh, is that a doggy? It looks like a bear to me. Oh my gosh. Up close. He was quite big for a dog. Am I right? I think it is a bear. Growl. Ooh, he was a bit grumpy too. But Lily thought that he was lovely. Nice doggy. He just needed someone to look after him someone like Lily. So that is just what she did. Come on. And she took him with her scarf. After, after their busy day together, Lily and Doggy made it back home. Doggy was so much fun, Lily was sure that mom would let her keep him. She didn't. Mom said that Doggy must have a home of his own with someone who must be missing him. Lily supposed she was right, probably. So to help Doggy's owners find him, Lily made a poster. Found one very silly doggy. Color, brown. Size, big and shaggy. Tail, short. Paws, big. No, very big. Legs, yes. Tummy, rumbly. He is silly because he never eats his dinner. Look, she put it in a dish right there. But he is tearing up the refrigerator. Silly doggy. He likes going to the park. Oh, she has to pull him. But he doesn't like to walk. Oh, there they are in the bus. He's no good at tricks. Sit. Doesn't do it. Hmm. Lie down. Good 
good boy. And he's terrible at playing fetch. There she goes. <gasps> oh no, where did your ball go? I think he ate it. He never, ever, ever does what you tell him. Stay, he runs. Sit, he stands up. Silly doggy. Heel! Don't go in the ice cream! Unless you ask him nicely. Home, please. And look, she gets to ride him home. He can get sticky and mucky, and he doesn't like bath time. Stop wiggling, says Lily. Hmm. You big baby, she says while she's blow drying him. But when he's washed, he looks very pretty. <gasps> Look at the nice bow. His favorite thing is scratching. My favorite thing is him. Signed, Lily. When the poster was ready, Lily and Doggy went out to put it up. found one very silly doggy, and it had all the information about the dog. Secretly, Lily hoped no one would see it. But uh-oh, here comes a car from the zoo. But of course, someone did. Oh, looks like the zookeeper came. That night, even though she knew he was happy back in his own home, Lily felt sad that Doggy was gone. But the next morning, she saw something wonderful in her garden. <gasps> Kitty! Hmm? Does that look like a kitty to you? Oh my goodness, that looks like a tiger to me. There we go. Silly kitty, says Lily. The end. Silly doggy. Oh, that I think it's Lily who's silly, not the pets. How about you? All right, our next pet book is called My Rhinoceros by John Eggie. Look at that big rhinoceros. Wow, these kids have some very silly pets, don't they? Exotic Pets is the name of the store that the boy is out in front of. Hmm. He goes inside and he's still pointing at the front window. All sales are final. When I bought my rhinoceros, I didn't really know what I was getting into. He was a nice animal, quiet, shy. He stayed in the yard, kept to himself. After a couple of days, I noticed that my rhinoceros would not chase a ball. Fetch! Nothing. Or a stick. Fetch! Nothing. Or a frisbee. Come on! He didn't roll over. He didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. I called a rhinoceros expert. Does he yank on his chain? She asked. No, I said. Does he attack other rhinoceroses? No, I said. Does he poop on the rug? No, I said. So what's the problem? He doesn't do anything, I said. Actually, she said, 
Rhinoceroses only do two things, pop balloons and poke holes in kites. I couldn't believe it. Pop balloons and poke holes in kites? How pathetic. And then I thought, oh, what if we went to the park and there was a man selling balloons? <gasps> he might trample all over him. Yikes. Luckily, nothing happened. But what if somebody was flying a kite? <sighs> he might chase the girl. Lots of kids were flying kites, but nothing happened. My rhinoceros didn't pop balloons. He didn't even poke holes in kites. I began to wonder about my rhinoceros. Maybe he was a clunker. Maybe I should have bought a hippopotamus instead. On the way home from the park, I saw a robbery. One of the robbers was getting away in a balloon. The other was escaping in a kite. The robber in the balloon was taunting the crowd. I looked at my rhinoceros and pointed to the balloon. Pop, I said. <gasps> to my surprise, my rhinoceros leap leapt into the air. He swooped at the balloon with his tusk, and pop went the balloon, and down fell the robber. I looked up at my rhinoceros and pointed to the robber in the kite. Poke a hole, I yelled. My rhinoceros swooped over and poked a big hole in the kite. Down Poosh, fell the robber. Everybody was amazed by my rhinoceros. The police chief raced up to me. Is this your rhinoceros? Yes, I said. Well, you've got a really special one. He can pop balloons and poke holes in kites. I know, I said. And guess what else? He can fly! And away they went. I don't think I will buy a hippopotamus. The End. My Rhinoceros by John A. G. Well, I hope that you liked those two books about pets. We have a few more books to read about pets on the other side of the break, and I hope that you'll come back and join me. We'll see you soon. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. So you can't save money? That's easy as pie. Brown bag and lunch instead of going out. $6 save times 5 days a week times 10 years is 21,000 bucks. That's a lot of lettuce. Small changes today, big bucks tomorrow. Feedthepig.org. Welcome back to Once Upon a Time, San Bruno Library's Cable Storytime. I'm Miss Susan, and today I'm reading books about pets. 
I'm reading to you on TV, but I hope that someday soon you will come to the library and see me read stories in person. We do lots of fun things. We get to stand up and dance and do finger plays, and we move all around, and we enjoy lots of good books together. So come with your grown-up to the library and enjoy story time in person. But today, let's read our next book called A Pet for Fly Guy by Ted Arnold. Now, some of you with bigger brothers and sisters might have seen some Fly Guy books at your house. We have some really good Fly Guy books for kids who are learning how to read. But this is a picture book, the kind of book that a grown-up might read to you. But it's also about Fly Guy. A Pet for Fly Guy by Ted Arnold. A boy had a pet fly. He named him Fly Guy. Fly Guy was the smartest pet in the world. He could even say the boy's name. Buzz. One day, Buzz said, Fly Guy, we are going on a picnic. Buzz and Fly Guy played chase all the way to the park. They ate lunch. Looks like Buzz has a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And Fly Guy has, what else? Some trash. They ate lunch. They played together. They looked at clouds. They watched other people play with their pets. Let's see. She has her fish. She's dancing with her bear. She's playing with her octopus in a fountain. What? He has a monkey in a tree? Oh, this boy has a porcupine. He needs to wear gloves so he doesn't get poked. Wow, said Buzz. Everyone has a pet. No pets. Oops, that's right, said Buzz. You don't have a pet. Mm, no pets, said, but, said the fly guy. We will find a pet for you, said Buzz. Yes, said fly guy. But remember, you have to take care of it, said Buzz. Yes, and play with it, said Buzz. Yes! And feed it, said Buzz. Yes! Said Fly Guy. Okay, said Buzz. Let's go to the pet shop. At the pet shop, Buzz came out with a puppy. It licked Fly Guy. Not a good pet. Buzz came out with a kitten. It's swatted fly guy. Definitely not a good pet. Buzz came out with a frog. <gasps> it chased fly guy. Oh no, that frog wants to eat him. This isn't working, said Buzz. Only you can pick the best pet for you. Yes, said fly guy. Back at the park. Fly Guy found a worm. Oh, but it was too slimy. Fly Guy found a spider. Oh, but it was too tangly. Fly Guy found a boing, 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 boing cricket. But it was too jumpy. Buzz said, oh, let's think about this whole pet thing. Yes, said Fly Guy. You need a pet who likes to play, said Buzz, just like you. Yes, thought Fly Guy. Oh, and he imagined Buzz playing. You need a pet who can do tricks, said Buzz, just like you. 
Yes, said Fly Guy. And he remembered Buzz doing tricks with him. You need a pet who is a good friend, said Buzz, just like you. Yes, said Fly Guy. And he remembered watching the clouds with Buzz. And, said Buzz, you need a pet with a cool name. Yes, Buzz! Buzz is pets, said Fly Guy. <gasps> me, said Buzz, you want me to be your pet? Please, said Fly Guy. I never thought of that, said Buzz. Okay, sure. I mean, yes. There's just one thing about being your pet, said Buzz. You don't have to feed me. Ugh, he is imagining that Fly Guy would give him trash to eat. Buzz said, do you know who's the best pet in the whole wide world? Buzz! No, Fly Guy! Buzz! No, Fly Guy! Buzz! Fly Guy! Buzz! Fly Guy! And they went walking off together. The end. That is a pet for Fly Guy. Well, I didn't expect that his friend Buzz was going to become his pet, did you? Hmm. All right. Our next book today is called The Great Pet Sale by Mick Inkpen. It's about somebody else who's looking for a pet, but just for himself, not for his friend. The Great Pet Sale by Mick Inkpen. Everything must go, said the sign on the pet shop window. In the window was a rat. I looked at him. Half of his whiskers were missing. I'm a bargain, called the rat through the glass. I'm only one cent. Choose me, choose me. Oh, there he is. Underneath the sign, one cent. Everything must go. Inside the shop, there was a tiny terrapin, which is a fancy word for a turtle, for two cents. It's a certain kind of turtle. And a bigger turtle for three cents. And a tortoise, a great big one, for four cents. Oh, I'm sure you wouldn't like one of those, said the rat, but you'd like me. You really would. There he is hiding behind that great big tortoise. On the perch were things beginning with P. A parrot, a pelican, a penguin, a puffin, and a huh, platypus. All five cents each. Oh, you don't want anything beginning with P, said the rat. R, R is what you want. R for ratty. Hmm, behind a plastic rock was a salamander for six cents. A skink for seven cents and a gecko for eight cents. Hmm, which one is which, I said. Nobody knows, nobody cares, said the rat. Sausages on legs, you don't want one of those. The next two animals were nine cents for the pair. Hmm, who wants a koala that doesn't like leaves, said the rat, or an anteater that won't eat its ant? I'm not fussy, I'll eat anything. Nine cents for the pear and free ant comes with the anteater. In the cardboard box 
were assorted little brown creatures. Everything for 10 cents. Assorted little brown creatures. Whoop, there they are. Everything for 10 cents. Boring. Boring, boring, said the rat. I'm not boring. Look, I can stand on one leg. And he did. At the back of the shop, we came to a big door. What's in there? I said. Oh, just a dragon, said the rat. There's no such thing, I said. Then you won't want one, will you, said the rat. I unlocked the door. It was a dragon, a great big Komodo dragon <gasps> for 25 cents. At last, the rat was quiet. You're not going to pick me, are you? He said sadly. Shh, I said, I've made up my mind. I counted my money, one dollar exactly. It was just enough to buy the rat. <sighs> and everything else in the shop. <gasps> wow. For a dollar he could get all of those pets, including that silly rat. The end. That is The Great Pet Sale by Mick, Mick Inkpen. Don't you wish you could buy all of those pets? There would be so, so many of them. Well, that is the end of my stories for today, all about pets. Maybe you would like to think about what would be a good pet for you. A big pet, a little pet, a pet that lives in water, maybe one that you could share with your brothers and sisters or with your family or that you could take for a walk at the park. It's fun to think about what would be a great pet for you. I hope you come down to the library and check out these books or come visit me for a special story time. I hope to see you at the library soon. And right now, let's sing our goodbye song. Well, it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Well, it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Well, it's time to say goodbye, make a smile and wave goodbye. Well, it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Bye-bye. So sit me down and let the spell begin. I'll find myself in story time again.